All right, let's, let's go through the allegations, uh, including the first one that got this whole campaign against you started, and that was this anonymous accuser. And by the way, just so the audience knows, I too have looked through all of the accusations, all of the reports against you. There is not one name, not one person accusing you of any sort of misconduct has gone on the record with their accusation. It is all anonymous from NBC, CBS, The New Yorker, the usual suspects. Um, and yet you are having person after person go on the record in your defense about your character from, you know, Will Kane and Dan Bongino at Fox, Joey Jones at Fox, the entire Fox and Friends crew this morning standing up and defending you. Dozens of people from my vets organization that were with winners. me everywhere. Yes. So that just so the audience knows, but we do need to go through sure. what people are saying so you have the chance to address it. So the first is this alleged rape that took place in 2017 at a uh, hotel out in Monterey, California, where the allegation is that you were the keynote speaker at a Republican women's conference, that you were drinking into the wee hours, and that a female so-called handler of yours, who was meant to see you from A to B, went back to your room with you to shepherd you there, found herself inside the room that you allegedly blocked the door. She, quote, remembers saying no a lot. And the next thing she knew, things got very fuzzy, and you allegedly raped her with her husband and children in their own hotel room down the hall. The police investigated. They chose not to charge. The DA did not see probable cause to charge this case. Um, we found out from the police report certain exonerating details, which none of the media will report, like you said it was consensual, there was no drug, and she wasn't, she wasn't drugged in any way, and she's on camera looking totally fine, according to the police, according to eyewitnesses, and according to her own husband, to whose room she returned at 4 a.m. She was fine, she was not slurring, she was not stumbling, and she apologized to him for being out, saying I fell asleep on somebody's whatever, and that's what you say she told you she was going to tell the husband. All right, that's, that's the setup for those mm -hmm. who haven't been paying attention. Did you rape a woman in a hotel in Monterey? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've been honest about that encounter, starting with law enforcement, uh, from the beginning. I was, I may have been drinking, but I was cognizant enough to remember every single detail. Uh, and, and I'm not here to say that my conduct was good. Um, you know, any, being in a hotel room with someone that's, you know, not the person you're with is not okay. I own up to that, and I've, I've had to own up to that, and that's been difficult. Um, and my wife's amazing, and, and you know, she knew about it, but going through it again is not easy. Um, but ultimately, I went through that process with investigators, eyes wide open and honest, because I knew I had nothing to hide. It's a really unfortunate situation. Um, and ultimately, they dug into everything, as you said. All, everyone that was there, all the video camera footage, all of her testimony, her husband's testimony, my testimony, and they looked into it and said, no way, we're not charging on this at all. In fact, there's other things that hopefully could come out in the future that would ben Our team is, is benefiting from more information. So we always want more information coming out of this because the more information that comes out, uh, the more people realize what this actually was. Um, and, and, and ultimately, um, you know, it's never fun to have your name. All they want is your name in the headline with that allegation. That's all they want. And then once they do that, they run with it. They, they don't care about all the details that you just pointed out. And when they I, summarize the case in the secondary reporting, they never include any of the exonerating details. Not at all. That's to be expected, though. That's, that's how our media today operates. Uh, they take one thing, blow it up, and then extrapolate ad, ad nauseum on it. But notice how that story has sort of faded away mm -hmm. because there's nothing to hang on to there, which is why. We okay, but what about, because you, you did pay her off sure. uh, a couple of years later. She came back threatening and wanting some sort of a settlement and you paid her. So was it a substantial settlement and why did you pay her? Um, I paid her because I had to, <laughs> uh, or at least I thought I did at the time. Um, I was newly married. I was up, up for potential jobs in the administration. So my profile was higher. Uh, and listen, they, they, she got lawyers that reached out to mine and said, if you don't come forward and if, if you don't pay money, then ultimately we're going to out him. We were in the middle of a Me Too movement. Uh, I had a great job at Fox and a wonderful marriage. And I did it out of, I mean, it's not what I should have done, but I did it to protect that. I did it to protect my wife. I did it to protect my family. And I did it to protect my job. And it was a negotiation purely um, to try to prevent that. Um, we paid a sum. I'm not going to disclose that amount. Um, but it was, it was, um, 
God, I mean, there's, you, you don't expect to go through something like that. You obviously feel like you're being used um, because of your public profile. There are plenty of people that have gone through that. The sad part for this is though that I, I th what it does is it cheapens the instances where there's real sexual assault. Like it's a real thing, it's a real problem, including in the military, which is something I will address very directly in the military. It hasn't been sufficiently addressed what some women in the military go through. And so when you make allegations that are proved to be bogus, fully investigated and cleared, um, and, then you, and then you extrapolate that, it harms other instances where it's very real. And it very undermines clear. the credibility of other accusers. Okay, so that one we've dealt with, but then come the flurry of allegations about your personal life. And I, I think it's admitted, at least in your divorce proceedings, that you did cheat on your first two wives. Mm -hmm. You're on your third marriage mm -hmm. to Jen, a former colleague of my own at Fox and yours too. And um, your hookup with this woman in Monterey happened when you were with Jen. So that's three, right? And there are a lot of women at home and men who will be like, it's a no, right? He's too much of a serial cheater. Like how can we put a guy in this position who's a serial cheater. So is that a fair characterization of you? I think it would have been, it was a fair characterization of me before I um, truly was changed by Jen and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I mean that, I mean, people cannot believe that if they don't want to, but if you look at me and if you know me, uh, if you have walked us, watched us walk into Colts Neck Community Church and Pilgrim Hill Reform Fellowship, the churches where we've attended um, that have truly I mean, I'll never forget a sermon that my pastor gave, Pastor Chris, who's a dear friend of mine, where he talked about most people miss Jesus by 12 inches from their head to their heart. I grew up as a Christian. My mom was on Fox and Friends. She's wonderful Christian parents. I intellectually was associated with it and understood it, but never really li lived it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was those moments in those places in my relationship with Jen as we grew together in Christ um, that I become a changed man. Um, am I a perfect man? No. Was I a perfect man? Absolutely not. Uh, do I regret those things? Yes. But is it who I am today? No. And um, I'm just grateful for the grace of God that gives me a new chapter. And I knew stepping out in this that that would be right. part of what would come at Was me. that it scary? Was part of the calculation. Sure, but what's the alternative? That people with difficult, somewhat difficult pasts can never step up and try to serve the American people and serve a president who was elected? Is that, is that the alternative? You, you have to be... You can't have made any mistakes in your life or, or reconciled for them or asked for forgiveness for them uh, if you want to serve in another capacity. And I just, my wife and I got together. We prayed about it a lot and said, we know the, sling, the slings and arrows are coming. Um, we're going to lock shields. That's why we're together on the hill. We're together everywhere in this process. Um, because if, if, we, if we can't do this together, then it's not worth doing. Mm -hmm. And having that assurance in Christ and with a partner where this is ride or die, for the rest of our life, no matter what, um, is life changing. And I've never had I've never had that perspective before. And I did that foolishly as someone who came home from wars and was untethered from, you know, accountability and all over the place, all over the map, until you know we, we just got a couple of horses. I don't know anything about horses, but it's it's a beautiful exercise. But what you realize is, you've got it when you handle them and you handle them properly. You've got to prove that you're kind of the alpha. They they got to want to follow you. And one of our horses is a little stubborn, and we got a trainer that comes over, and sometimes they got to yank on the, on, the, on the harness. And I feel like sometimes God had to yank on me a little, a little harder um, to say, Pete, pay attention here. I think a this lot is people, your purpose. Especially guys coming back from war look for the answer in a bottle and eventually find out the hard way it's not in there. And maybe it's in the Bible instead of the bottle. <laughs> right? I think I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah. it, it actually is. Like, I've read the Bible before. This is the first year this year where I've read it through cover to cover, uh, in addition to devotions, in addition to uh, daily prayer time. And, and you realize how foolish, how foolish we are as individual human beings untethered from eternal truth, untethered from the wisdom of the Bible, from the wisdom of the patriarchs, to the judges, to the prophets, to the disciples, to Jesus Christ, to everything that happened. When we don't know and contemplate and and start our day on those things. We start them focused on ourselves or our needs or our wants or our prides, um, all of which are destructive. I mean, I, I talk to my kids all the time about this. Um, you know, there's sin equals slavery. Um, the truth, the Bible equals freedom. And I've created plenty of problems for myself. But I know here sitting, I'm, I'm a liberated man by the gospel of Jesus Christ and the partner that I'm with. 
And people can take, take that or leave that or, and believe that or not. I know that in my core. I know how we started our day this morning uh, was in, in prayer, and it's not going to stop. And we hope we get a chance to serve the country in the process. So what do you say to people who say, well, uh, you are nominated to be Secretary of Defense, and in this position, you'd run a military where they court-martial people for infidelity. So how do you look at those guys and say, I will judge you. I will pursue these charges against you. Um, you follow the laws that's applied. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know exactly what instances they would point to and when and what that process would be in the National Guard, and I'm sure that will be litigated. But my point is, my job is to follow the law, the UCMJ, and I would do that. Did you know that American homeowners nationwide have over $32 trillion in equity? And cyber criminals are targeting it with a growing scam the FBI calls house stealing. House alarms, doorbell cameras, and deadbolts will not work against these thieves because they're not after your stuff, they're after your equity. If your title is not being monitored, scammers can transfer it into their name and then take out loans against it or even sell it behind your back. The best way to protect your equity is with triple lock protection from Home Title Lock. Triple lock protection is 24-7 monitoring, and God forbid, if the worst happens, restoration services at no out-of-pocket cost to you. When was the last time you checked on your home title? Likely never. And that's exactly what these scammers are counting on. Make sure you're not already a victim. You can get a free title history report and a 30-day free trial of triple lock protection today by going to HomeTitleLock.com and using promo code MEGAN or click on the link in the description. That's HomeTitleLock.com, promo code M-E-G-Y-N, HomeTitleLock.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.